You're today we're going gradient crazy, creating and discussing the art of gradients in Photoshop. I'm Molly Dope, and I'm checking in once again with another dope video. I want to go over exactly how you can use gradients to create fire designs in Photoshop. We'll explore the differences between gradients, gradient maps, and we'll even discuss the gradient tool, the gradient editor. And then we're gonna hop into some real use cases to create some dope photo gradient effects as well as some text effects. And then my favorite glow effects using gradients in Photoshop. Without further ado, let's hop in the computer and let's get to it. Yes, sir. What exactly is a gradient? So a gradient is a gradual blend between multiple colors in Photoshop, similar to Umbro or Umbru or Umbri. The nails that the girls be having, Umbro. So similar to that, gradients can transition between multiple colors using angular, radial, reflective, and diamond patterns. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's quickly run through what the gradient tool is and the gradient fill adjustment layer. All right, so we're in Photoshop. I kind of already have an image kind of booming and a background so we can kind of have like realistic examples or whatever. So like I said, this is like for all my newcomers. If you don't already know how to get to the gradient tool, you usually just press G on your keyboard and this will bring up the paint bucket tool. For me, the paint bucket tool is what's selected right now, but you just hold that down and right underneath that is going to be the gradient tool. And it's going to give you what it looks like this like crosshair aim type of thing. Now you have your options at the beginning. You have your gradient, classic gradient, but you could just keep it as gradient. You have your gradient picker here and you can pick a bunch of gradients. This list is the same list that's here. It's just in a more convenient spot. Like I said, these are all of the different patterns that you can use for the gradients, but we'll get to that in just a second. Here you can reverse the gradient color. So right now if it's black to white, you can switch that from white to black. And dither is to reduce the banding. So sometimes when you do gradients, it gives you like a weird look. So right now we're gonna create our first gradient. We're just gonna go into here and then you could just drag this down if you want. We can just go into the reds here. I don't really like any of those. So let's see what my sunset pack has. We're gonna go with my Groovy 15 and my Groovy gradient packs. All right, so what you're pretty much all you're going to do is right now we're selected on the radial and we're with that reverse. So it's going to go from red to black. And all you pretty much do is pick your area and then you're just going to drag as far as you want. As you can see, you can keep dragging till this is as far as you can go, man. Like, And if you want to, you can just bring it in. If you just want it nice and small, you can create different angles, move it around, drag it out. Boom, like that. Now, since we have this selected, we have the radial. Now, there are the different types, like I mentioned before. You have linear, which is just an up and down, straight across selection. So you can select it and you have so much control when you use the tool, rather just creating your own gradient fill layer because it's automatically going to make it. But like to start, you can have a great idea of what you want, nice and small nice and long, you know what I'm saying? If you just want to bring in a darkness, like it's coming in from the darkness, if you want to go and pull this and then press reverse, you can do that same thing and it'll come from the top, right? So that's linear. You have diamond, which is kind of like a clock. You usually use this for surfaces and things like that. This is reflective. Reflective means, oops, let me drag this. And then if you grab this here, if you click the middle, you can like drag your reflections as, as well. So you can make the reflections as long as you want and stuff like that. And then bring your reflections down. And this is all just using the gradient tool. Reflections give you reflected colors on the top and on the bottom. So then let's go ahead and delete that. Now for the last one is gonna be the diamond pattern. My fault. The last two was the angular pattern. This is the diamond pattern. That's my bad. 
And as you can see, it is a diamond, simply just a diamond. Diamonds are forever. It's like, nah, I'm joking. But as you can see, here you go. This gives you like a diamond pattern. How we can create custom gradients using the different tools that Adobe has afforded us. So we're just gonna go with this type of vibe. I really just wanna center in on the Black Panther. So I selected a radial gradient from that red to black and I'm just gonna go ahead and stretch it. And I really just want a strong gradient like in the center, but like lightly, boom. Well, maybe I should move it in closer like that just so y'all can see a better understanding. Now that we have our gradient and we've made our gradient, let's go ahead and click on this, this space. There's multiple ways that you can get to things. Like you can double click here and pick a gradient, right? You can go down to your fill layer that it created for you and double click on that. And this will give you a bunch of choices for your gradients. You can switch the patterns that we had up at the top, trace the gradient again. You can switch the angle. That would probably not work for radio because it's only one. You can also increase the scale here, just like you did on the main gradient tool. Same thing, you can reverse the layers here. This is where you'll see all the different types of gradients, smooth, classic, perpetual. We want to go ahead and go into the gradient editor. And this is what all the magic kind of happens. You're just going to click on there, double click on this, and then this will come up. Now you're getting the gradient editor. Now in the gradient editor, your same selections that you just had and everything else. So I just want to explain a little bit more about what this is particular, and then we'll get back into the gradient tool. First, is the presets. This is where you could just kind of select your presets like we did prior to. This is where you can name a preset after you want to save it. Say we make a custom one. You can select certain colors. You can add colors on here. You can delete them by dragging them down. You could change colors. You can move colors around. Let me try to pick another one because I feel like you can't really see it. So I switched the colors around. As you can see, all you got to do is click here. We're just going to go with this one to practice real quick. You can change these colors. This is a pretty good palette. I'm not even going to lie to you. Like I said, you like these? Check out my store. Check them out. Anyways, if you want to ch change your color, just click on this. And then as you can see, the color comes up. And that comes up for each of the passes. So for the passes, say we want to change this pass to a blue, right? We could do that. We can actually pull up the strength of the colors as well here by clicking it, see how, how strong the location is. So like, does it have like a strong circle or is it strongly feathered? The further it is closer to the next one, the more feathering it will be. Pull it back to the end here and we want to change the opacity, you click up here, top here on the black ones, and then the opacity is zero. And then this will make it a transparent layer. Now that we have this, if we want to keep it how it is, we probably name this something like, I don't know, gradients, right? And then you just export it, and then you'll have your own set of gradients. So if you have one that you really like, you can do that. So we're gonna set it back to Sunset 7 from my Sunset Gradients Pack. The dots have came along on the actual gradient fill because we still have the gradient tool selected. The gradient tool gives you a little bit more control rather than using the gradient editor, but the gradient editor is really good. You can do these same things here. If you wanted to bring it in, you could bring it in. If you wanted to bring it out, you could bring it out. If you wanted to move, uh, oh, let me try to choose, choose another one. If you wanted to move and have this a little bit smaller or a little bit larger, you can do that. If you wanted to, you can still double click here and change the image to any color that you want. Same thing, stretch here, move it down, move it slightly, you know what I'm saying? If you wanted to reverse it, have it inside out, that's pretty cool right there. But you have all the control in the world. That's pretty dope right there. Now, the key to any gradient is going to be the smoothness of it and the color harmony. I feel like a lot of these colors work for this particular image because of the color harmony of it. You have from yellow to orange to red. It's a gradual, get it? Gradual color change, i.e. a gradient blending multiple colors together. You know what I'm saying? So we're just gonna delete this and we're gonna go ahead and go back to that red and black one that we had. At the yeah, 
So we're gonna go with this one. Go ahead and stretch it out. And then I do wanna change the color in here. So we're gonna go just change this to like a lighter red, boom. We're gonna go, if you don't like this here, I don't like that it's so dark right here. So I'm gonna just drag this down and I will delete that. And then I'll stretch this out a little bit further. Bring the stretchness out on this, that. I'm trying to change the color of this right here. So I'm going to change this color by double clicking on it. I'm going to just bring this up to like a lighter red right there. Bring that in a little bit. Bring that in. You can also grab this here. And if I wanted to, I can make it like look like, as you can see, a diamond or like an ovaly. It can control that. But anyways, I just wanted a regular circle. Then we're just going to stretch it out. So it's a gradient, but it's not too overbearing. How do gradients differ from gradient maps? If you watch my tutorials, you'll see me using gradient maps a lot and people are probably wondering like, what is even the difference between a gradient and a gradient map to begin with? A gradient map remaps the colors in your image to a gradient based on the luminosity values of your image. Essentially, it applies gradient colors according to the light and the dark areas of your photo layman's terms the whites and the blacks it takes the colors and maps it based on which colors you select so now we're just going to get into a few gradient maps and show you guys what they do i have this image here of a bmw i feel like this was the best way to be able to guys, show you guys what you, what you're able to do so go ahead and create a great gradient map half circle click gradient map your gradient map will Pick up the colors of your background and your foreground colors that's already chosen. So if you want a specific color and you know what you want to do already, you can just do it that way. We're going to go ahead and click dither just so it's nice and smooth. Go ahead and click on the actual layer itself. Or you can, like I said, just click on this arrow. It'll, you could just select it from here if you already kind of know which ones you want. If you don't, click here. It'll give you back to the gradient editor. So for this, let's see what we got here. I got some pretty cool stuff. So let me pick one from the groovy pack. I want to see something so y'all can really see the colors. I want to stick with the red and the blacks only because I feel like I can show you and explain to you guys a little bit better if I only have one or two colors. If I have a bunch of colors going on, I feel like it will distract you guys from what we're actually trying to do. All right, so as you see, we have the red and the black. The red is mapped to the white and the black is mapped to the black. Now, if you wanted to reverse that, this is what you would get. And now this is the reverse mapping. So the red now is mapped to the black and the white or uh, the black is mapped to the white. Go ahead and reverse that. Now with these, you can also go ahead and play with the blending modes. I always tell people play with the blending modes and it'll show you like the different types of effects that you can get. Like look how the gradient map affects this lighting. That looks really, really cool, you know? Color burn tends to do this a lot too. So color burn is a real creative way to use it. Linear burn kind of brings down all the blacks, you know? And this is for all the darkness. So if you want to affect the darkness, this is the one that you want to do. If you want to affect the lightness of an object, this is where you're going to go. This is where if you just want to color and adjust the colors. So hard lights, vivid lights. Vivid lights is given what color burn gave, but like this looks a little bit clearer. I felt like color burn gave you like a dark vibe to it but anyways go through all of them pin light is like one of my favorites too when i do certain styles of cover arts hard mix difference is gonna flip everything it's gonna make the reds blues the blacks whites so let's go i feel like everybody should usually use darken or we'll just use darken just because it's not as prevalent i feel like when you click on that and get your properties back up like I said, if you want to move it up a little bit, make the reds a little bit more prominent, you could do that. Ooh. You could do that. Move this back to the end. Move this back over. Now it's even more dark. You know what I'm saying? If I want to add a color, you could still go in here, add a color. You feel like it needs some a little bit of separation between all that. You need to give it like a like that thermal type vibe. You know, say I pick a yellow. Be like, all right, the, the yellow's working a little bit better for me, blah, blah, blah. Oh, bring it down, control it. You feel me? Go in there, go to color, 
go back to what is it linear linear and play around with them man like i said you can try a bunch of different stuff you got to just experiment i feel like with any of these gradient maps bro experimenting is key now you know the difference between a gradient gradient tool gradient editor and a gradient map so that's pretty much everything gradients within the actual program itself now that you have the knowledge you have to apply it you know what i'm saying what's the point of having knowledge if you don't use it it's just a waste so anyways let's put our knowledge into practice by creating like a simple cover art using some of these gradients i'm going to show you a few techniques on how you can use gradients to your advantage besides these simple techniques we're going to create some glow with gradients and we're going to create some text using gradients so you can be able to see how you can use it in different cases all right let's get right into the cover arts like i said i got the beautiful ice spice what she what she be saying you not even a fuck <laughs> did you just say you not even the fuck <laughs> what she said i'm shaking in the deli <laughs> No, but for real, big shout out to the Bronx Co-op City. You already know what it is. We ain't let no Ice Spice slander shall be tolerated. But anyway, she is a perfect use case for this cover art. So this, like I said, this is a simple cover art. I don't want people thinking like, oh, this was a fool. No, simple. Simple meaning 10 minutes or less. And I want to show you guys the gradient. So that's what's the most important. So her name is Ice Spice, right? So obviously it got to be some sort of cold vibes. So we're going to start by selecting the background. We're going to select our gradient tool, right? We're going to go, we could go radio, but I feel like we just did something with radio, which was the Panther. So let's go ahead and try something different. Let's go for the linear. Now me, I hate choosing mines like this when when it's the drop down menu because I need to see. So let's go ahead and just drag it how we how we want it. I think I kind of want it there. I want it coming from like blue or no black to like a lighter blue, and I want the transition to happen like right by her eyes. So we're just gonna go straight up like that, and then as you can see, you can make it strong. Or I can kind of be like, make it even more gradual. And I could change it just like that, but we're just gonna double click, click on here, go to our pack, see what we got. I'm gonna go to groovy. Let's go groovy. This is cool. This gives me Spotify cover. It's giving Apple music cover. Ooh, groovy 21, I'm telling you, tap in. Tap in. Ooh, I really like that. I really like that for some reason, but this one right here kind of really caught my eye because it's like white, but it's black. And I feel like if I reverse it, click on here, reverse it. Now, but now you can see too much of the hair. So let's go back in here. It is the one right here. We're going this black, we're going groovy 13. It got three stops. And I'm trying to figure out if I want to keep it like that or like that, like the blackness, <laughs> the blackness and it's coming off her shoulders or should I do it the reverse? This one, I think it gives like a sandwich look. It was like, it was a gradual, but like, I don't know the black, the black looks good too. We're going to go right here with this, call it a day. There we have our background. I ain't going to do too much with the background by adding a bunch of elements and all this stuff. Like it's, that's not the important part right now. So. We're just gonna click on ice the ice spice layer, go to filter, go to liquify. Oh my goodness. I have not used the liquify tool in so long. It's just like not one of my go-tos. But look at this. Like if you could really see, you can see it's choosing her eyes, it's choosing her face, her lips. Let me see what this does. Oh no, I can drag her lips, make her mouth wide. I can make her lips big. I don't want to do all that. I don't want to be giving her all these things. But like, look, I can stretch her. I can make her ice. I can make her pumpkin spice. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. You can make the eyes bigger. Give it like that cartoony type of look. Stretch them out. Make them big. Pause. Make it look like a cartoon. Yeah, let's keep it. Why not? Anyways. We're getting besides the point. We made a couple of adjustments. I feel like that looks pretty cool. We're really just gonna use this forward tool right here and we're really just gonna be focusing in on her face. 
So let's go ahead and zoom in on her face a little bit more. Since this is really all we have is her shoulders up. And I really want it dragging. Since she's kind of licking her lick to the left, let's drag to the left. And we kind of want it look like her face is kind of like being torn from somewhere. Now that we have our Ice Spice liquefied layer, let's go ahead and start adding some gradients to it, all right? Go ahead and click on the half circle, go to a gradient map. You always wanna start with a black and white gradient map, just like I said, because the colors map to black and white. So sometimes when you had color images, they don't map as well. You can try it. I just like to start mine with black and white. And also make sure your foreground and your background colors are set to black and white. So when you create that, you don't have to click reverse and all that crazy stuff. We're just gonna clip mask this to Ice Spice because we wanna keep our background to be able to show what we have. Go ahead and click on this gradient map again. And it's gonna give you the same like black and white type thing. We're just gonna right click and create a clipping mask. So once again, the same thing. Gonna go and click on the actual gradient. Brings us back to our gradient editor tool. We're gonna go ahead and go into the groovy gradients and I'm just filling this one. There's a couple more. The red and blue looks cool. The green on the blue looks pretty dope too. But I think we should just go with the orange. Now for me, as you can see, the orange is mapped to the black here, but I want this to be blacker. So we're just gonna click on this and then click on color here. And then just gonna bring this down just a little bit. And then this will bring in some of those colors back. Now I don't want it too crazy, but I do want it to be pretty strong. And any of these colors could have been changed. If I clicked yellow and wanted to make it white, it could be white with the ice spice and the blue and all that stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? So even if I wanted to lighten this up and not have it as strong as yellow, I could have that, but I like it how it is. Now we got a little something, something going on. Let's make a new layer, shift F5, fill it with 50% gray. Go ahead, fill that in, fill. We're just gonna go ahead and add some noise to it. I already like, I add noise on the regular, so monochromatic, uniform, or Gaussian, and then just call it a day. And then go ahead and go straight to overlay, soft light. I like how overlay is looking. So let's just go with overlay. And then we're just gonna bring this down just a wee bit. Cool, and if we wanted to, we could probably click on Ice Spice, add like a little quick gradient overlay if you wanted to. Like I said, don't have to. So if I just wanted it to uh, affect the Ice Spice layer, and then make it like it's coming from the darkness. So if I went up like that, you know what I'm saying? And this is straight on the ice spice layer. It is only adjusting on the ice spice part. Let's just bring, bring it down a little bit and then bring down the opacity just a wee bit so it's not too crazy. Ooh, like that. And then adjust the scale so it's a little bit harsher because we want it really, really small. Boom. You can use another gradient overlay inside of layer styles, another way to use gradients. Now, one more time. If you wanted to create a stroke, for instance, you can click on stroke. As you, can, as you can see, it's giving us this big, ugly black stroke right here. But you go to fill type and you go to gradient. That's another set of gradients that you can adjust and it still bring you up to the gradient editor doing the same thing. Let's just switch it up a little bit just so y'all can see some other stuff and we need to pick one that's gonna be really off kilter. Inside of this here, inside the stroke is the gradient. And then you can scale the gradient as you can see here in the window too, to see how it will work. You can reverse them the same way here, bring it down. If I wanted the blue and separate it like that, bring down the opacity. If I wanted the blend mode to be different out here, You know what I'm saying? You can scale it up, scale it down, call it a day. Like if you wanted a double, you could do that. For this one, I don't think we necessarily need like a gradient. I just wanted to show you guys what was available. Like I said, using the different gradients and creating small little quick cover art like this to show you how you can layer different gradients and how they can be used in different aspects of the work. So like I said, we did a gradient background, we gave her a gradient map. Then we went ahead and added a gradient overlay. I did want to show you guys one more thing too. 
on these gradient maps, you guys should know already. If you don't know, you can always, if you only want the gradient map on certain parts of your image, you can go ahead and erase certain parts of the image. I feel like this is very clear cut. And then you want to do that on the black and white layer, too, if you want to bring something back. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I just wanted her chains or if I want to bring the eyes back, you could do that. Get creative, man. This is why we do tutorials. This is why I show you guys different ways to play around with stuff. I'm not here to try to create the best thing right now. I did want to show you guys one more instance. Let's go ahead and turn off the ice spice layer. And let's go ahead and delete the mask, too. And then let's go ahead and remove the background one more time. Say we wanted to get a little freaky with the background. Instead of just doing that plain old gradient layer, you can go ahead and go back to the gradient tool. You can use that same thing. Say it's here. And let's make this smaller. Boom. And then we do need a strong base within it. So we need to go from like a crazy color to like so to white. Something like that. This is pretty cool. So let's go like this for reflective. Let's move this white down a little bit. Move that blue up a little bit more. Let's go ahead and convert this to a smart object. Go to filter, liquify. Same thing as like ice spice, but now this time just go crazy for real. You can just kind of like boom this up to a hundred, boom this up like, and then just go crazy for real. Create something crazy, but as you can see, now you kind of controlling this a little bit better. Uh, pin the edges. You can control like the color so much better. Like look how I have so much control. It looks like an, an ocean or a wave or something like that. This is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and make a circle layer real quick. Go ahead and just make a circle and then drop that below the gradient and then just go ahead and clip mask this to the circle. Now you can either clip mask this to the outside of the circle or fill the circle in and make sure you fill the circle in. And then for stroke, we don't want no stroke. We don't want no stroke. But boom, you can make it like any part of the circle here. Like that looks pretty cool. That part of the circle looks pretty cool. So grab that, grab this part of the circle, move it down. This one is pretty cool right there. You can make it bigger or smaller. That looks fire. Double click it, bevel and emboss, outer glow, give it some depth. You know what I'm saying? Give it some things so it can, it can chrome out a little bit. That's it y'all. I just kind of wanted to show y'all what y'all could do with that. And then say we just turn Ice Spice back on. Go ahead and convert that to a smart object. And boom, look at that. So if I wanted to stretch it out, you can make something cool like that. You feel me? And that's just like one cool thing that you could do. Like I said, using all the elements, that background was created using gradients and moving gradients around using liquify. It's just like, there's so many levels that you can do with the gradients, making shapes, making backgrounds, coloring, effects. But enough with the Ice Spice, let's move on to our next example. We're going the AE1s, one of the best shoes to come out this year. This shoe is bringing back wearing them in the streets. I'm definitely gonna get me a pair. It's just the colors that they have aren't like colors that I wear often. Like they have mad random colors like lime green and blue and peach. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, that's not what you're here for. You're here to create some cool glow gradient effects. Now you can use gradients to create glows with a few steps. All right, so I have this like icicle type of background that I wanna try to impose somewhere, somehow, some way. So we're gonna start off by creating a gradient background. Nothing too crazy. I really just wanted to like black to blue for real, for real. And then, like I said, you can adjust whatever you need to adjust, bro. Boom. And you could have probably done this with like the angular or the diamond and have it have it come in the same way. So just for instance, I just want to show you guys what this is. So now that we have created this fill layer, 
go ahead and double click on that. Let's just save it for now, just so I can show y'all. We're just gonna name this AE gradient. Name this AE gradient and then click new. And here it goes, it creates a new gradient for you. And then I do wanna try a different style. Like what happens if I switch it to diamond? That diamond kind of looks tough. Move the diamond down. I feel like that's a dope, like just a go dope background, but that's not where you're here. Let's go ahead and add some ice into there. Boop, boop, boop. And we just wanna add it very faintly. Go ahead and drop the opacity down. Cause you want it there, but you don't want it too crazy. And I don't want it to overtake the black. I really want that black in there. So yeah, that's kind of cool right there. So I ended up going with multiply at a level of 19. I think it gives it a nice little ice type of feeling. First, we got to set up the gradient glow layers. So first we want to start off by creating a new layer inside of our layers. Shift F5, you're going to go ahead and just fill it with black, select that. Then you're going to create a new blank layer. We're just going to name this layer paint on. Take these two layers, make a group. We're going to call this the glow layer. Now we got to create a gradient map. Automatically it's going to give you white to black. Go ahead and choose the one that you want. Let's just say we just go with the one that we already selected. Click dither. And as you can see, this is all that shows up. But if we were to paint on that layer right now, you will see that our gradient map comes up from the colors that we selected. That looks tough, does it not? Click this layer, it's gonna be set to screen. Let's go ahead and turn this AE on and bring AE underneath everything. Get it out of this group. We're gonna put it on its own group. So what we need to do now is create another group. Click on the group here. We're gonna name this the shoe glow. You're going to put the painted on layer inside of that. So now we got to go ahead and control click on this mask. This is going to give you a selection of your object and you're going to click on the shoe layer and then just click this mask button right here. So now that we have all the layers pretty much layered up, we added our mask and everything like that. I couldn't get like this, 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 the, the gradient, like that fade away look away. So since everything is set to screen, Go ahead and move this up and add this black stop. You gotta add the black stop because that will make everything disappear because it's set to screen. We gotta play with this inverse layer here. We already created our, our mask for the shoe. So now the shoe is selected and, and not everything else. So if we click on this, this means everything else outside of the shoe is selected. We're gonna go ahead and inverse that back to its original layer. And now let's just start painting on the inside of the shoe. My opacity is gonna be at 85. My flow is gonna be at 70. Make sure you're on this paint on layer. Depending on how strong it is, this is the glow that you're gonna be getting. So right now I just wanna do a nice like soft glow around the edges. I did get a new tablet y'all. So I'll do the unboxing and then a pin tutorial later, but just wanna let y'all know if y'all wanted to go real thin around the sides, you could and give it that nice glow. But for us, we're gonna just create this nice medium sized brush and then just start hitting everything on the sides. Oops. And that gives that nice a glow already. So that's pretty far, not gonna lie. So now what I would do is take both of these Control J this is the copy. Let's call this show, Shoe Glow Outer. Click on this, Control I, inverse it. Delete this paint on layer and then create a new layer inside of it. Name this paint on two, right? Now, same thing. Look at that, crazy. If we want to create another like gradient for real, we could. So, or if we want to create like another like Reflective gradient, we could. If you want to make that smaller, like that, increase this a little bit, and then just hit a nice glow on there. You know what I'm saying? Like that, sh that looks fire. And then make sure this dither is selected because sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't give you that nice smooth thing. As you can see, smooth, perpetual, linear, classic, smooth stripes. And let's just start creating some nice glows 
So I turn the thing up just so when it hits it, it's just, just as light. So boom. And this is all with the glow. So say you want to paint this back on here, get, get back in there, make it smaller, turn the opacity where it's at, turn the opacity all the way up. And then that's when you start getting in them details right there. Nice, strong on the white. And this is all with one brush. You know, you just change an opacity and uh, flows. But I just want to be able to show you guys. Oops, the possibilities, you know. Now. If, for instance, we didn't like all the blues and all that stuff that it had going, you can literally go in there by clicking on your gradient map, double clicking that. This will come up and then you can change these main colors. If we want to make these colors red, for instance, green, you know what I'm saying? The green kind of looked tough, too. Like, you know what I'm saying? We turn this to green, blue, turn that to like a greenish you know what I'm saying? Light skin blue. You feel me? Like an alien shoe type thing. You feel me? These probably about would have worked better with the with the Lavars. You know what I'm saying? Like the Lavars. I said the Lamellos. My bad, y'all. <laughs> I'm tired. But anyways, like let's go in here. Like just mess around. If it's not too light, maybe it needs to be lighter. You know what I'm saying? Where the fall off is happening, the white is too crazy. Maybe we make it a little bit blacker. And then this is how you kind of control the glow aspect. You control how, how strong the glow is going, the direction of the glow. It, it should be a little bit more white, give it a little bit more gray. Should I dial it back a little bit? And then just play with it like this. Oops. So if you move it, there goes your outline of your shoe right there. If you want to move something, you have to move all the mass layers. So everything moves how you want it to, to go. All right. So this is this is straight. Like, this is all right. It's, it's, it gives you a nice little glow. I feel like I'm just so anal. Let me get, get in the shoe a little bit. I do want to just add some small, like, highlights, like, around the rims of the shoe. But if you wanted to create a new paint on layer and then you could do the same thing. I can go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then blur the line. So it's not as strong, you know what I'm saying? But it's still controlled. I'm going to just keep it on there just so y'all know I did add something different on there. Just so, you know, you see an example. It's not even like, you know what I'm saying? That's all these are is examples. That's looking pretty good. We, we set the lines up. We did the glow, everything kind of is looking I. Right. We added another layer to kind of add some more glow onto it. So what else would this need really? I think we're pretty much done with the actual glow aspect of it. I hopefully that made it clear as far as like the possibilities of what you can do for the glow, as far as like the background and controlling it. You probably want to run this section back. It's probably very, very confusing. It was confusing for me when I found it. I actually found this idea from Duran Studio. So shout out to him. And I'm pretty sure he found it from somebody else, but I'll definitely be using this technique on a future, uh, on a future cover art so I definitely have that in on the table because I definitely want to use my tablet that I just got my drawing pen I just I just got a drawing pen so I want to use that box that and show you guys the capabilities with that I had a drawing pen about two years ago I definitely lost the pen pad like I just have the pen the pen is just sitting right here don't know where that pad went but who knows one more last step for the cover art before we move on to the text right I felt like it would be cool if it had some sort of like motion graphic. Like it looks like it was like it was cold and it like flew somewhere. You know how you have that cold air sometimes. Duplicate the shoe layer. So the copy. Duplicate this and we're going to turn this to a smart object. So now it's just the mask of the shoe. We're going to go ahead and drop the glow layer back on. And then that outer glow. We're going to go ahead and just drop that shoe layer oops right in there right we're gonna go to filter blur 
motion blur. And as you can see, like, it's picking up what I'm putting down, you dig? But no, <laughs> it's picking up those gradient effects from the outer shoe. So now this only affects the outer part of the shoe. So now you can choose the distance to be as far as you want. It could be small if you just want a slight, like, glow on there. Like that. That's fire. I kind of like it like this. And we can come back to motion blur. But there's other blurs. If you want to do blur, try a radial blur. But the only thing with radial blur, you never can see. That's the only reason why I don't like it. I kind of like it like that. Now, as you can see, the, the radial blur only hits from around the sides. And like on the parts of the shoe where it's glowing. So I kind of like that. So we're just going to leave it at that. And then we're going to move on to the text. You dig? Let's go on for our next example, bro. Let's add some cool text effects using gradients. We're going to type in. These are called the Arctic Fusions. The text. Maybe go back to that arch. Vertical, horizontal, let's bend it, arch it or whatever. But I want that vertical, like I want it to come from the shoe type thing. Like I really want it to be like thing. But like if you go like this, it'll be like coming off the shoe and it would have to be on top. But I feel like at the bottom here, maybe we swap the, yeah, just a little bit. So then it looks like it's laying down a little bit. Oh, now we can like increase that a little bit. Whoop. Type in A E one by A D D I S all day I dream about sports. You're going to go ahead and double click the layer styles. What you're going to do now is you're going to set it to color overlay. Click this button. If it doesn't have color overlay already selected, we're just going to, it's already at 50% gray. So we're just going to keep it as is. Go to bevel and emboss. We need to get like a chromey type of vibe. So just click on here and then just follow my settings after I input them. I'll keep them on screen for a little bit. Go ahead, copy these settings down. We're going to move over to contour. We're going to do a nice little cone. But we want the range to be like good. Like, mm, that's cool right there. Then we're going to go ahead and add satin into there. Go ahead, click satin. And then go to multiply. We're going to fill this with 50% gray as well, like we did before. Switch the angle up a little bit. And then as you can see, the satin is affecting all that was within it. Switch this to linear. All right, so now let's go ahead and add our first gradient inside of the text that we have here. So what we're going to do is go back to the gradient tool. We're going to go. I have some chrome gradients that I got offline. So we just want to try to find some cool looking chrome type vibes i like this let's go with the reflected type of vibe here convert this to a smart object and then we're going to do what we did for the uh what's her name ice spice make sure everything is up at 100 100 and then just kind of go crazy bro like create a cool texture that's what you want you want cool textures out of this then you're going to just clip mask this to the arctic fusion and for some reason, it doesn't pop up like that. So you got to make this a smart object. And as you can see, without the clip mask, with the clip mask. Now you can move this clip mask wherever, wherever gets you the best results. I kind of like this right here. Adjust the blending modes for this joint. So I'm not too crazy though, like cool, nice little overlay will work. Turn it down a little bit. You just want enough so it's like enough texture in there. Boom. All right. Now you're going to create another layer. Layer this white. Make this back to all the original stuff. Ooh. 
regular soft brush. And then we're just going to paint white. Like a, I don't even know why I'm painting on a shoe. A strong white type of vibe. Wherever some pops of light could be at. Make it smaller. Ooh. Clip this mask to the layer below. Label this. Put this as linear dodge, color dodge. You could try screen, light in, linear dodge. Works cool too. Around, turn that uh, effect down a little bit. But if you want, you can adjust. As you can see, the stronger you bring up, it just has a nice effect. I don't even know how to explain it. The, if you bring it down, it's darker. But if you bring it down, like it comes out a little bit better. I don't know how to explain that. You see the vibes. Now that we have pretty much all the text, let's go ahead and create a text group with just the Arctic text. We're gonna call this Arctic text, right? I probably spelled that, up, but whatever. That is not my concern right now. All right, so create another gradient map. You're gonna create a clipping mask to the Arctic. Now we wanna go in there and select some more of those chrome type of text. And this is where it's gonna give you a strong chrome vibe. Like as you can see, now it's starting to give like a chromey type of, you know? I don't even know how to explain it. That's hard. I kind of like that too. All right, this one's pretty cool. So we do need to adjust it a bit. We got to get some of these blacks going. Change some of these to black. Click on the outside. Just click on the stops and change them to black. You guys can go ahead and copy that. Rock out how you want to rock out. I mess with that joint. I always play with the blending modes just to see how it looks like if I try something else with it. Ooh. I kind of like how lighting looks with it. I'm not going to lie. Ooh. Overlay kind of look tough too. Ooh. But let's go with just overlay. I kind of like this overlay. It gives it like a nice chrome type of vibe. And as you can see, if you still want to go ahead and go in there and adjust... The gradient fill, you can still go ahead and move this around as as you please. You can go in there and adjust the gradient too. You can make it smaller, you can make it larger, what have you. That's fire right there. And like I said, this linear dodge layer, you can turn this up. You could turn it down, linear dodge, color dodge, screen. Boom. Move that joint around. You see how it moves? It's just like, that's fire. But I kind of like it how it was, so. Go to linear dodge, go back to linear dodge and Put that joint back where where you had it at. This is looking pretty good, you guys. All right, so let's close this up. Let's add one more gradient map to give it like a bluish hue. So let's add another gradient map. Go ahead and create a clipping mask. And let's just try to use the one that we made earlier. See how it looks. That kind of looks sweet, don't it? No, I got to have black in there. Got to add that black back. Ooh, what happened? That kind of looks sweet, don't it? Probably bring this blue up a little bit. Have the blue going crazy. Have this blue going crazy, like a white. Boom, fire. I always play with the blending modes just to see how it looks. Oh my goodness. That looked tough. Overlay. Ooh, the hard light kind of looks kind of tough. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Ooh. Probably that's why we, we should have done. We probably should have done the peach text below. You know what I'm saying? For the blue, but right now I'm trying to keep everything like monochromatic. Ooh, that. Yeah, though. 
That looks kind of tough too still. And then color just kind of colors it. And I kind of like how color looks, so we're just going to leave it be. One more time. Create this. Make a group. We're going to name this Arctic Text Main. We're going to duplicate this text group by pressing Control J. We're going to convert it to a smart object, right? Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And then we're just trying to get a little bit of, you know what I'm saying? You see how it's a little bit foggy looking in there? That's exactly what we want. And then we're just going to go ahead and set that thing to screen. Linear dodge. Ooh, linear dodge look cool too. Ooh, light, lighter color kind of looks tough too. And then just turn it down as you please. And then with this, you can always go in there and adjust your Gaussian blur. You can make it bigger. You can make it smaller to give it just that. That glowy type of vibe. This is looking pretty good. I want to move everything up a little bit. So let's just go ahead and move everything up to the middle. I feel like it was too down low at the bottom. The AE1 can remain down there at the bottom, like right there. Grab everything, move it over. Now we get into like the, the thick of it. Of course, we're just going to add that shift 50% gray and we're going to go ahead and filter noise add noise in there same thing from earlier should still already be on there this is i'm not saying too much but you know Ooh, like the possibilities like if you start it like with this you can definitely like finesse so oh and that's what I'm saying. You got to practice with the layers and the blending options and how everything kind of works and twerks together. So you'll be able to come up with new ideas and new ways of doing things based on just going through the blending modes. Like there's an idea that you can come up with this kind of like scheme, you know, we're just going to go with a nice like, ooh, that vivid light going crazy. That hard light, not that vivid light. We definitely got to go vivid light for sure. Like I told you guys, I always check all of them, but that vivid light is going too crazy. The vivid light brings out some of the stuff and it still like makes it bright. So we're going to turn that down a little bit. And it picks up in the glow. So the glows are having noise now. 40%. That's calm right there. I think the only thing I didn't do for the AE ones is double click on it and open it, add some clarity, add some texture. Bring up this exposure a little bit. Yeah, I love this. This is this is joint looking cool. For a nice little practice assignment, this is this is pretty tough. And like all this stuff you can go back and fix. I can go back and fix the text. I can go back and fix anything on the shoe. I can add glow, subtract glow. But like I said, the possibility of gradients and like just using gradient maps, gradient fills, the gradient tool, like Gradients really made this pop, like, because without any of the gradients, it would have just been really, really dry looking. Like, that's all I can, like, say. Fire. If you want to get real fancy, I'll add a gradient map to everything. You can just dither this, reverse that. You could just bring this down a little bit and then look at, you know what I'm saying? Like, we can keep going. It, it's It's never ending. This, if I want to make everything a little bit darker. This, if I want to control it a little bit, soft light, bring it down a little bit. And if you see me do stuff before, like, and do a tutorial, you see that I always, where is it at? Color lookup table. I always try different looks, bro. Like, if it was the green shoe, this gave you three straight look. I like that. This is pretty tough. Fall colors. Ooh, tough. This one gives you a nice ice cold look. But yeah, if you go through all these, bro, look at it. I think I'm going to just go three strip. Yeah, I'm on. I think this is it, bro. I ain't trying to think about it too crazy or go too hard about it.
Gradient maps are a concern for me. Like I said, if you need any help, please don't just be DMing me, asking me for help, bro. Get in the Discord, bro. Drop it in the feedback. Ask me for feedback in my Discord. All that DMing me, ask me for help. So help me help you. You know what I'm saying? What I will do, is I feel like the only way y'all will go over there is if I literally give you something for free. So what I'll do is I'll literally give you guys this. I'll give you guys this particular project file for the free. All you got to do is sign up to Discord. So I'm going to go ahead and drop it in the Discord as a zip file. You enter in my Discord while it's free and download it, dissect it, interpret it, do whatever you need to do, practice, take the text. I don't care. Do as you please. And there it is, folks. A few fire designs we made in Photoshop using the power of gradients. I hope you enjoyed this video and feel inspired to experiment on your next design using some of the techniques that you saw in this video. But when you are working on that next project, you know me, shameless plug, go check out that ODM shop. I do have the gradients, uh, like I mentioned in the video available for purchase. So, you know, help support the channel, help support me. I greatly appreciate it, y'all. And they're fire, so they will help your designs as well. Thanks again for tuning in. But don't forget, man, the comments be looking mighty dry up underneath these videos. So leave a comment, leave a fire emoji, leave a heart, leave something. You know what I'm saying? And then go ahead and click that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed so you don't miss a drop. I hope everybody's doing great. We had to light it up for green because at this time, I think Boston might have it. But unless Dallas comes and does like something incredible, I just, mm, I'm just going to leave my hands like this. We're just going to go with the winners for now. I'm definitely a Knicks fan till the day I die, but you know, you got to go with the winners. You know what I'm saying? Like May said, the cowboy hats are on back order. But anyways, bro, like I said, I hope everybody's doing good out there. I hope everybody's happy, healthy. And you know what I'm saying? Enjoying their summertime, learning during the summertime. Don't waste this time. Make sure you're out here being proactive and whatever you're trying to do. Time it waits for no one and neither do your dreams. The faster that you work and the more consistently that you work on your dreams, the faster that they can come true, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to stay on the stay on the path, stay fast on the mission. And you know, obstacles come and go, man. And you got to just keep overcoming them. You can't just stay stagnant or feel sad for yourself or bad for yourself because it could be worse and you could be in a in a different situation you know what i'm saying so i just use dot design i use art and i use this creativity to like keep my head at peace keep my heart in balance keep my life in balance and stuff like that so you know i really love this stuff y'all but anyways i really did hope you guys learned something in the meantime in between time y'all remember keep hustling keep creating and most importantly keep learning and until next time Ali dope and I'm checking out. Yes, sir.